right, we're back. Circling Back Podcast coming to you live from the Lodge, presented by Roback. Get backer 20 for 20% off your first order. Sick. My name's Will DeFreeze. To my left, David Ruff. Hey, um, wanted to start off the week by just congratulating all the uh, barbecue joints that made Texas Monthly's top 50, or I guess top 100 barbecue joints in the state of Texas. Um, just going to get out ahead of it. Uh, Beef by Dave did not make the list this year, but we're just happy that people were thinking about us. So, how many Austin joints are in oh, the top fifty? You're gonna have to read it. Not it's very many. Much. Really? Actually, there's a few that I'd never even heard of. Is Franklin's right? top ten? Yeah, yes, number six or very seven. Very cool. Very sick. Yeah, but you know what? We're gonna we're gonna take this as motivation. We're not mad about it. It is what it is. Did you actually submit your your beef? I did. Your meats? Yeah. Are you beefing with the rankings? <laughs> You know, just no love for uh, for beef by Dave. Beef by Dave. You you also offer pork or chicken or turkey or anything? We do, but like kind of our, you know, the bell of the ball is the beef right. or the beef of the ball is what I say. <laughs> I was gonna do beef by Will, but it, we were having some Google issues when people were googling BBW. What what did they get? <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> what what did your dad call Buffalo Wild Wings? Didn't he say like B B dubs? No, it was like B dubs is what people call it. it yeah, is. but but I like there are people that like what is what, God? What is it? It's like Buffalo. I don't even know. Dylan, how you doing today? B W threes is what a lot of people call. Yeah, B W threes for some reason. I don't like B B W threes. B W threes? I don't even get it. I don't either. Randy knows, but he doesn't have a mic. He's he's doing the the veiny face kid over there. I feel like it's a Midwest thing to say BW threes. Um, thank you for asking. Well, I am I am doing quite well. Very happy to be here. Um, off of a it's pretty a pretty electric weekend. I, I see you eyeing my tie dye, rowback uh, hoodie over here. You hit him with that island boy hoodie. Yeah, my island uh, boy. Put a dollar in the, the jar. No, okay. Island I I'm do one dollar for the island boy jar. Are you are you still searching the text trying to find what your dad's called yeah, it? Yeah, I'm just I just actually I found where he's telling me about this protein shake. <laughs> BW dubs or something. How are you doing, Will? You no, know what? No one ever asked you that. Man. I'm doing pretty fine. I'm pretty doing pretty fine. fine. Yeah. Okay. It was a long weekend. It's yeah. one of those Mondays where you, you're kind of excited to escape the weekend. It's like, all right, get me out of this. I need to get back in a healthy, healthy routine. I need to get back in a healthy state of mind. I'm ready to get this pod. Mm -hmm. After that weekend, I'm kind of in a New York state of mind. Really? Why? A wedding. A lot of folks from the Northeast. Good people. It, they kind of brought the house down when they played Frank Sinatra at the end there. New York. If you were uh, along for the ride on my live at DC Ruff on Instagram, congratulations. If you thought you could wait till morning to check it out, no. That's a real time. That's real time enjoyment. I delete. I delete my lives the next day, and it's not because I have anxiety and don't want to watch them. It's just because it's like it, you have to be on that wave with us. It's not like a next day thing. It doesn't hit the same. Did you go live from circling back, or did you go live from David Ruff at DC Ruff on Instagram? And you on the <laughs> I somehow missed that. I didn't. What, at what point in the wedding did you go live? Can you download it next time so we can at least watch it the next day? Yeah, like doing? I'm out here. I'm I out tried here. to save it, but it did not. I don't know. Maybe I have it on my phone. You're like this big look. content guy, but you're keeping content from the people. No, not the people who were riding with me on Sat on Friday night. They got to see it. What time did you go live? It, during the last song, during uh, New York, New York. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah, I almost fought the wedding planner at one point. Who was it? I didn't even know there was one. I don't know. She came, I don't know why she came up to me and singled me out as the person, but she came up and she looked at me and she goes, you're not allowed to put him in a chair. Talking about doing oh, a yeah. Hava Nagila. Wait, and I, why? And I was like, I was like, I wanted to be like, first, why'd you go up to me and tell me this? Like, Did she, did she hear you talking about it? She I don't even think out. I was talking. I, think she, saw, I think she saw a look in my eye of like, where's the chair this that we can looking go grab? for a chair. Everybody was thinking. And then she, she runs up to me and starts berating me about it. And I, I looked at her and I was like, we're doing it. Was it like a venue liability thing? Probably. But yeah. I told her, I was like, we're doing it. And then the more I started thinking about it as like I escaped the conversation, I was just thinking to myself like, this is this is a, a Jewish tradition that we're gonna honor. What's that song called? Hava Nagila. It is incredible. I love it. Is that the one that's like I am a island boy? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's a traditional Jewish. 
song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I thought I'm an so. island boy. Are they? Uh, so are you? Um, uh, are you here to uh, say uh, that they were uh, trying? To <laughs> they were trying to eliminate the traditional Jewish. Yeah, dance mm -hmm. whatever. I feel like the chair is actually safer than what we actually did, which is hoist him up. Exactly. I told person. her. I was like, there's no way. She's told me. And then after I told her we wouldn't do a chair, she looked at me and she said, you can't prop him up either. And wow. I told, and that's when I told her. I was like, no, we're, do we're that, going to do that. That's when you said bet. What's she going to do? Kick the groom out of his wedding? <laughs> yeah, what, what, yeah, what are you gonna, how are you going to enforce this? Yeah. I was like, okay, like, if, like worst case scenario, let's say that like Micah falls and like he like shattered his shoulder or something. Like, I mean, you're not on, you're not on the hook for that lady. Yeah, I wonder why she was... So adamant about that, she lost that battle. Yeah, because we absolutely hoisted. Yeah, she, we should have hey, hoisted her up too. We Take should have just out. grabbed her and just tossed her in the air. <laughs> I didn't know which one she was. I don't know. It could have been just someone from the venue, but I, I was not about that. Damn. The second you it was if, electric. If I'm if I'm drinking draft beers at a wedding and someone tells me not to do something, my my brain defaults to I have to do that thing yeah, it's right like, now. Well, I wasn't really well, thinking about doing, it, but now I absolutely am. She kind, you know, I wanted to be like, hey, I've I've never really been, I've never been to a wedding where this is a thing. Yeah, I would like to experience it. I've been and to you're one, ruining that for me. I've been to one traditional Jewish wedding, and we did that, and he like he broke the glass up there at the altar and all that stuff. But we, we put him in a chair and we did that song and it was it's so much fun. You ever been to a Greek wedding before? No. I had never been to one until it was right before I moved down to Austin. And what I was not aware of is that at Greek weddings, they just everyone brings a bunch of cash and they just throw it on the ground. And so the entire yeah. wedding venue was just covered in cash and you're not allowed to pick it up. It's for the bride and groom only. You're not supposed to pick it up. And so the, the groom, who was my cousin, told me, he's like, yeah, it's like, uh, tell your buddy to come for like the late night portion of the wedding let's have some fun yeah and he, and somebody came up and they're like hey make sure to tell your buddy not to touch any of the money on the ground okay the, like it'll it'll be an issue have you heard of the the money dance thing the that, shmoney dance <clears throat> it's different than the shmoney dance yeah. yeah the money i think it's a mexican tradition okay i think they might do it other places too but uh when i got married Look since my up. my ex-wife is half mexican mm -hmm. so they we did the, the money dance basically uh you pay to dance with the groom you pay to dance with the bride and it's just a way to like donate money to us, basically. I think there might be part of that in the Greek one. Yeah. I could be wrong, but I, I kind of got the feeling that people were doing yeah. that. It lasts for one song, and so basically during the song, I danced. I danced with like seventeen different people, and they oh, all donated. Wow. Look at this guy, Mr. Big Stuff. No, it's it's, it's tradition. What's were y'all daggering? <laughs> yes, <laughs> we were. We were daggering. It says the male guests pay to dance with the bride and female guests to dance with the groom. Yeah. I feel like that's uh, been updated, that tradition. The money dance is an excuse to gift money to the couple, Dylan, as you noted. Mm -hmm. The gifted money is used by the newlyweds for their honeymoon or to set up a new home. Yeah. If, if what I'm reading uh, previously So you're supposed to build a home out of money. <laughs> from your mind. Well, it seemed like you were reading that straight, straight from your computer screen, but that was just I think right it, off the dome. I think it is a, 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 it fun. a Mexican wedding tradition that arrived from Spain. Yeah, if I'm like, not mistaken. That's pretty much. I, I pretty much said all of that earlier. You didn't mention Spain. Well, I said a Mexican tradition that arrived from Spain. You left that out. Kind of a key detail. I didn't know that it arrived from, from Spain. So that you brought that to the table. So we we thank you for that that knowledge. And you knew that already, which is very cool. Can we get some official <laughs> biz out of the way, please? Major announcement alert. We did, we we were gun shy about announcing this on Wednesday's podcast, but we can officially announce it now. Yes, we have a candle. We're island boys. Oh, my gosh. Do you even burn scented candle through Vellabox? Circling back collab. It's available. Vellabox.com slash circling dash back. Vellabox.com slash circling Wait, dash do, do back. We, do we straight up have some left? I thought they were, they'd be sold out by now. We do. We had a, we had a, uh, an overall successful launch, but if you're still looking to get a scented candle that's branded there with a few uh, laying around. some circling back Wilmons Vellabox style, they're island still out there. Boy. Uh, also, spooky Stop. season it keeps going on. Uh, we got t two spooky seasons left. Is that what I'm? Is that what I'm seeing? Can we do three? Maybe no. three? Can we? We have four no. left. Are we doing them for the rest of the time? No, we have two left. Email spooky at washmedia.com or head over to uh, patreon.com slash circling back podcast if you're trying to get into spooky season. We also have Friday voicemails that release on Thursday, and if you subscribe for an entire year, you get ten percent off your subscription. You guys want to hear a couple of reviews that we got? <laughs> Please. Uh, Someone sure. said Dave the King. 
Huge fan of Dave's three-point plan. Amazing to see him step up and fix our environment while he's enduring an awkward-shaped yard situation. I stand a king. I think they're talking about your plan to recycle, reduce, and reuse. Wow. Yeah, in no particular order. Did you come up with that? I don't. I mean, I don't want to take credit for it, but I probably did, yeah. Uh, we had someone say, sick, dude. This small to mid-sized podcast is anything but mid. <laughs> if you're looking for a podcast with an absurd amount of Limp Biscuit and Papa Roach references, then this one is for you. Don't worry about the inside jokes and seemingly moronic bits. You'll catch on eventually, as it's the only way she can enjoy the podcast. Hashtag Dilly for Gliz- Glizidente 2024. That's not a hashtag that's going to catch on. I don't, I think. don't know. Probably not. It could. But thank you for the review. Uh, and the final one I'll read is from N. Farrell 23. Uh, congratulations to uh, what he's about to say here. He said, three best friends. He said, if you're looking for a podcast where the hosts become three of your new best friends in your head, this one's for you. I got engaged over the weekend, and a few hours later, I turned to my fiance and said, oh, shoot, I forgot to tell Dave, Willen, and Dillian. Da- what? Why did I just mess that up so bad? Willen and Dillian. Will, Dave, and Dillian, only to realize that they don't know who I am. Uh, hey, N. Farrell 23. We know who you are, player. Happy engagement. Also, go check out YouTube.com slash Wash Media. Don't I, read that other one. I think it's time for <laughs> recapping this weekend in fun presented by Headspace. Are your thoughts running in endless circles in your mind? Sometimes Is your mind getting freaked way. by your thoughts right now? Dude, especially after that big game yesterday. Dude, and with the stresses of this last year, it's more important than ever to practice living healthier and happier lives. So what if a few minutes was all it took to change your relationship with stress and anxiety while transforming your life for the better? Well, that's the power of meditation with Headspace. Our thoughts can be confusing enough, and meditation doesn't have to be. Headspace is your convenient dose of meditation, mindfulness, and sleep exercises to relieve stress and anxiety and help you get a good night's sleep all in one app, making it easy to catch your breath and make time for your mental health. And it's one of the most science-backed meditation apps in the world, proving that meditation does work. A study proves that in two weeks, just two weeks, Headspace can reduce your stress by up to 14%. You think I don't already know that? Like I haven't been using it for years now? Have you tried their personal uh, SOS mini meditations for a quick breather? Is that the three minute guy? A lot of people think a lot of people think that you need to have like you need to set aside like ten to fifteen minutes to meditate. No, you don't have to do it. I started off with with the with the short ones, the three minute ones, and then I stepped it up after that. I found them very helpful. I mean, I've found that you can you can do a quick meditation and if trying to go to sleep, and there's a high chance that you're not going to finish that meditation because it alters your mindset so much. The voice. That you hear in the app, it's like this person was born to do exactly what this person is doing for Headspace. They should have you do it in the big text voice. That'd be good. Okay, Or the Christopher Walken voice. Close your eyes. Big text as Christopher Walken. (laughs) That's that's, that's a level of, uh, I I can't get there. (laughs) I'm not capable of pulling that one off. Find some Headspace at headspace.com slash circling. Get one month free of their entire meditation library. This is the best Headspace offer available. So go to headspace.com slash circling today. Headspace.com slash circling. Dylan, what'd you do this weekend, my guy? Oh, wow. Thank you for asking. Um, I did, uh, well, I went to Micah's wedding Friday night. Uh, Bay was with me. We had uh, she, her first time meeting Micah and Caitlin, actually. So that was that was great. And it was honestly a lot of fun. So thank you to Micah and Caitlin. It was a, I had a blast. Had an absolute blast. Um Saturday, I, I was trying to meet up with you guys, but timelines kind of got, got me- messed up there. So Bay and I went to dinner at Matt's El Rancho. Met three very nice backers there. Forgot their names. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. One of them ran into you, Will, or two of them actually ran into you. I didn't know that you were yeah, there. I out. popped out of my Uber, which was my wife's car, and uh, immediately got gassed up. Felt pretty good. Yeah, yeah, they were very nice. In town from uh, somewhere. I forgot. Dude, Lafayette, Louisiana. Yeah. Um, and then Sunday it was a uh, I was spent a lot of it with uh, Bay and Low Bay and in parks and we had a little I went to the park, uh, had a little breakfast out, out and about and uh, watched a lot of football. It was Damn, great. football's for the boys. Football is for the boys, and that was it. It was, it was an excellent weekend. Speaking of the boys, what that boy get into? Pretty much the same, minus uh, it was my family, not his. Oh, yeah. I didn't hang out with his family. Were you texting with Parks the entire time, though? Uh, yeah, but he said he was a little bit behind on the game, so like, don't text me. Like, I don't want to know what happens. So, it was just tough. There's a lot happened. Um, that wedding was great, man. It, it was, was good. We had a little bus. We had a little bus controversy, controversy. Will 
in the, there was two pickup locations, one downtown, one in West Austin. My area, Dylan's area, actually a little bit, uh, Oak Hill area, if you're familiar. And they, Will and Dylan, were going to the downtown one, which is like we assumed was going to be like the cool, vibrant one. Like that's the cool it party was. bus. Yeah. And then we had ours, which was fine. It was uh, me, uh, Club Cool's own Barrett Dudley, and his uh, lady friend, Laura, and my wife. We got there really early, Alyssa and I, and uh, ended up buying a, a bottle of rosé from the Residence Inn Marketplace. You know, the little tiny little place they've got where they sell like the, the whole frozen bottle? dinners. We got a bottle. Dude, oh, they don't dude. do by the glass. Don't you, don't you feel like, I feel like you can just steal from there. I, we didn't really feel like stealing. No, but late if you if you are staying at one of those like late at night and you want something to eat from there, there's never anyone there, and it's like, well, what do I do? Do I like leave my room number on the on a piece of paper or something? Be honest, have you stolen from there? I've I have stolen some late night snacks from one of those things because no one's there to look at it, and I was like, hey, if they catch me on camera, I'll be like, what? Well, I'll pay right now. Sorry. Damn. Or you could do the thing where you just give them a random room number, which is very sorry. But they, they tried to catch me at 4K. Not happening. We drank a bottle of rosé before we got on the bus. And turns out it was the same bus. It just came by and picked us up. We figured it out uh, when we were at the hotel that we were going to be picking you guys up. We wanted to be a surprise. We didn't tell you that we'd be, we'd be scooping you. Yeah, it was a great surprise. Yeah. You were surprised you got on that bus to see us. Uh, yeah, you know what? I kind of was. Yeah. Um, it was fun. Had a good time. Yeah, great wedding. Uh, glaring lack of chair uh, when hoisting the, the, the groom. But, you know, other than that, good. Really good. Pretty lit, man. The band was, the band was good. Was, yeah, I didn't mention the band. They were actually the really singer good. singer put on a fedora halfway through the show. That's uh -huh. when you knew it was about to turn up. Yeah, exactly. She's like, you know what? I, I'm going to step away for a sec. Just, just, I'll be right back. You're like, oh, where's she going? How did Micah not get that fedora for his performance? Needed that fedora. Micah did sing. Have we posted oh, yeah, that? We didn't, we didn't talk about no, that. No, Sally has the entire video. Sally also has so the I. entire video of uh, us on the dance floor doing the traditional dances and hoisting Micah up. Oh, yeah? We're going to have to do something with that at some point. Very fun. Should we cuck uh, his photographer and just start posting like the videos and stuff? I don't know. I I heard it, I heard Micah refused to give his photographer any porterhouse steaks, so he deleted all the photos. <laughs> that was my highlight. Is when <laughs> we knew it was porterhouse steaks, and in my head, I'm like, "There's no way each person is getting a porterhouse. It's the law. It's one of the larger cuts, right? If Very not big. the largest." And uh, I I look up, and they brought it to me first, and there's just I mean, it, it's not just like a what was that, like a 38-ounce porterhouse? It was yeah. gigantic. That they had already chopped sliced. up, and it was yeah. family style. And I was like, oh, okay. And you know what? For me, perfectly cooked. For some, some wanted it like more well done. Not me. So more st more beef for the D-man. Okay. <laughs> once I once I heard there were rumblings around our table that some people might have thought that it was a little too rare, I, I perked up a little bit. I was like, all right, that means more for Big DeFreezy over here. I'm going to be pounding Porterhouse all night. Big yeah. DeFreezy. Mm -hmm. D-Man and Big DeFreezy. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Dude, I had and a dude, weekend. Dude, the turf, too. There was the surf. The surf was good. It was what surf was the and surf? Turf. We surfed, too. Was what white was fish? Red Redfish. Oh, red the fish. redfish. I forgot about the redfish. I, I love some good side redfish on a... On a Bonus redfish, if yeah, you will. That's true. Yeah. It, was a, it was a tasteful amount of surf. It wasn't like not a surf or something. Okay. Uh -huh. Austin band. Big turf guy, though. Popular. My parents stayed in this back house. What? I haven't told you about that. You're talking about... <laughs> no. Like the keyboard player from Not a Surf lives in Austin, and my parents did an Airbnb, and it was it was his back house. How did they from come what? to that? Did he have his platinum record? Dude, they had some stuff on the walls, and I was like, I was like, they have they're really big Not a Surf fans. And then I started I started putting the pieces together. I was like, oh, this guy's just in Not a Surf. What Sick. is Not a Surf? It's a band. Never heard of them. No. There's some they're they're they're, they're, they, they're middle aged fellows at this point. They're they yeah. The only surfing I do is swag surfing. Really? Mm. Yeah. So you do the schmoney dance at your own wedding, and then yeah. you swag surf. Dude, sw swag surfing is. Is lit. I'd pretty much the same weekend. You know, your boy stepped out for that wedding, did his thing. Um, you know, woke up, had a little brunch, tried to lick the wounds a little bit. Watched Manchester United absolutely shit the bed. Shouts to everybody uh, who also endured the Manchester United to Texas pipeline that day. Didn't end well for anybody. Oof. And uh, yeah, then I met up with John Duda. Uh, what I didn't know about John Duda is that he's essentially the Wolf of Wall Street at this point. Dude, he's Jordan Belfort. Dude. Congrats to John Duda. That's the first thing yes. he said to me when I walked into the bar. Like, he didn't even say hello. He goes, 
He told me he was the Wolf of Wall Street. I don't know why I started calling him Wolfie. Just like it really, ever, really started enjoying the bit. I wasn't aware of him ever actually working on Wall Street. Dude, he's the Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. Yeah, congrats <laughs> to John Duda. He got engaged. We had to holster that on uh, on Wednesday's episode, unfortunately. Yeah, but we knew it was going to happen. Very exciting stuff. He was nervous in here. He told us. He's like, I'm nervous, man. How? Yeah, you better be. Yeah. About to make a big decision. You're thinking about John being the kind of guy who would get nervous about that, but I guess it gets it gets everybody a little bit. He did it on the Fluger Bridge. No one's talking about that. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't know where that was, Dylan. Yeah, I, I didn't. I knew, I knew about the bridge. I just didn't know what it was called. Um, They got some great photos on that bridge. Shout out they to – I, I don't think they had a professional photographer, but they everybody – They did. they really? Yeah. Okay, I thought it was just uh, her sister. But whoever took the photos, uh, he told. Well, he, I don't have confirmation, but he told us that he hired somebody. So, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. That was a that was a fun Saturday. Sneaky, sneaky long night. Ran into Randy as well and Brett. Wow. The squad was mobbing. Well, didn't squad go minus me. Yeah, you ghosted us, but that's fine. I didn't. I did. I did you did you go? I didn't see. It. I told man, I I didn't know that y'all were Street. linking so early. I planned to meet after dinner. By the time my dinner ended, y'all were like we were out. down and hammered. And we Will really was, weren't. Will was already home. Will came. Will was back. Will was out till like ten o'clock. No one had me coming back immediately. I did immediately. Not. I was. I got there. I was a little bit. I was like, Will just left, and they're like, Yeah, he had a dinner. I was like, Well, we're not gonna see Will again. I know how Will does at Matt's El Rancho dinners. No offense. But I've seen I've seen this play before. Yeah, Not only did audience. I return, I returned within thirty minutes. You really did. I looked over uh, from our street side view and saw Sally in your vehicle by herself, and I was like, "Uh oh!" <laughs> I was like, "What happened here?" And uh, you told me the story. It wasn't anything juicy, but it was just oh. Will's back. Guess who's back? It was good to see him. We were we were betting on him uh, to finish his beer. It's a game I'd never seen played before, and I didn't realize it was being played with me as the focal point. But uh, I think Brett started the game, and he decided to play a game where they guessed how long it would take me to finish my beer. Without him knowing. Yeah. Oh. And so I was just casually drinking my beer, and, and suddenly I, I do a beer finish, and everyone starts celebrating around me. And I'm like, what is going on right now? And That's apparently I'd, I'd finished it right under the uh, allotted time. Shouts to me. How much time was he? were you given? I, we think, I think – Dan had a much different version than Brett. Brett was doing something around nine minutes, and Dan's Dan's description was around eighteen minutes. Was there actual money changing hands? Was it an actual bet situation? Hard to say. More drinks being bet. Okay, that's a good way to do it. That's fun. That's a good yeah, way to do it. You know, even though I, you know, you guys know I do carry cash now. I have a a, a voluminous amount of ten dollar bills on my person at all times. No one has more ten dollar bills than David Ruff. That's they were call, They were calling me Davy Ten. Yeah, they were. I thought that was because of something. They're call, they're calling me the Ten Man. No one's calling you the Ten Man. Give me that oil. What's, what are we doing? <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> I had a good time closing down uh, the night with Dan as I watched the last leg of his sixteen parlay, six game parlay, just just in real time, just crumble. Wait, so he hit the first five? Hit the first five. So he was, oh, okay. This he was is, looking good, good. Was there a hedge situation, or he just let it all ride? No, it was, he said he'd already, he was already up, but whatever. It was it was Utah, um, Arizona State, and Arizona State blew like a 14-point lead in the second half, and it was just, it was, it was just crushing. watching Dan just kind of resign to his own fate, like, okay. How many, yeah. how many units were on the game? Uh, I think it was one medium boy <laughs> stack. Okay. Okay. How many units? Love talking in units. Mm -hmm. Man, how about my Cowboys? Oh, boy. I thought what you'd a be game. a little more vocal on the TL. Well, a lot of people uh, are wondering if I'm the magic part of this season. I'm, they're undefeated since being Will DeFreeze's Cowboys. You've been a fan for two weeks now? No, one. Just one. Just one, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, well last, had... last week was when I watched them, and I was like, you know what? This team's fun. And then this week, I was like, yeah, they're my, they're my squad. They're still really fun. Dude, we They're, are them boys. I um, I I forgot we were window. We're doing our windows up now with the weather being beautiful. Our window, what is it? Windows open, I guess, is the better term. Or down. With the screen. Just kind of depends oh. on your window. No, no, no. In the, okay. in the home. You're right. Okay, I in got you. Home. At home. And uh, as, I'm, as I'm doing my classic one hard clap, yeah, mother effer, real loud, 
And there's a neighbor. Like, our houses aren't that far apart. So I'm that guy. They can deal with it, dude. Let me tell you, as a Cowboys fan who also has C.D. Lamb on his fantasy football team, oh. that last play was pretty electric for me to I watch. Mean, did you see these boys? <laughs> dude, how's your team doing, man? Uh, we're about to pull us to three and three. We're we're in the thick. Cool, man. Yeah, we got some work to do, but we're there. Damn, call you Larry Bird. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about speaking. Of, oh, weird. Speaking of birds, <laughs> talk about bird dogs, my friends. Wow. Arr- that's a bird dog. I don't, that, that wasn't bad. More, it sounded more like a, like a wolf. It's in the dog. I thought it was genus. John Duda. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the species. It's in the family. What What have I told the listeners out there that we had an opportunity for them to purchase some shorts that are not only the best and most comfortable pair of shorts that they've ever had, but they also have super soft built-in underwear. Like what? What if we got to put that out there to the people? I mean, as someone who has owned these and worn them for a long time, I, I it wouldn't be surprising to me. But if you're unfamiliar. Yeah, that'd be some exciting news to hear. Who they're just out here kidnapping other people's people. Yeah, you know we we don't in, we don't co-sign. We don't we're not on board with kidnapping. But if no. you're gonna do it, you might as well just go for the the best designer in the game. Dude, they stole Lululemon's designer, and they're just yeah. doing it better now. We should steal the best podcaster in the game. Let's steal Rogan. You just want to kidnap Joe Rogan? Yeah. Okay. Take a play out of Bird Dog's playbook. I don't know if I can lift Joe Rogan. I wouldn't want to. I would not want to try to kidnap him. No, he'd be he'd be a, he'd be a tough one to steal. He's like a bowling ball, a fire hydrant, or a thumb. If I was gonna st- like steal Joe Rogan, though, I'd probably do it wearing Bird Dogs, as they are very easy to do athletic things in. It's a great point. Mm-hmm. We should steal the Freakonomics guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> He he seems much more stealable yeah, than Joe thinking, Rogan. Yeah, I was like Rogan's not that stealable. Plus, Rogan's got some baggage, and I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> Go get some bird dogs. Bird dogs, they're back, baby. Go to birddogs.com, enter promo code STEAM, and you'll get a special surprise in your package. Just think about that. That's birddogs.com, promo code STEAM, and boom, you have to see what you have to see what happens. I love my bird dogs. Bird dogs pants. <laughs> They're my everything pants, Will. My happy hour pants, my golf pants, my lounging pants. Your lounging pants. I wear them to dinner. I don't care. They're my uh, beef pants. Do you smoke meat in them? I do. Wow. They pair well with beef. Speaking of beef, we're doing all the best segues today. Damn. Will, you're just... Do you see, you see uh, some, some, some customer of Salt Bay's is absolutely outraged right now that he had to pay thirty seven thousand dollars for his uh tab at salt bay's restaurant is that dollars Not dollars pounds sorry english pounds what's, what's that conversion? Yeah, what's Brit- conversion british sterling someone looked that up pounds to dollars yeah a londoner who reportedly splashed out on a thirty seven thousand dollar dinner of food and drink at salt bay's restaurant in knightsbridge was left outraged when he when the bill arrived oh the meal for four people cost an eye-watering thirty seven thousand twenty three pounds and ten pence is that the word i don't know mike pence yeah. What's the conversion, dog? It looks like it's 50k. Yeah. A little slightly Ooh. above almost 51. All right. So the the number one the number one high ticket thing on here. Actually there's two. There was the golden tomahawk steak for $850 or pounds. Three herb crusted fries at $10 a pop. Uh they also got what appears to be some bottles of champagne. That's what did them. And uh they got three bottles of champagne. One was a 1996 vintage for 9,100 pounds, and then the other ones uh, you got. They got two of the 2003s, and those ran about uh, 10,000 pounds each. Was it? Was it the 03? Yeah, yeah, it was the 03. Sense, yeah, the, that, oh, the Petrus 03. The that only one thing that really makes sense about why this person would be upset to get this bill is if, like, maybe the the waiter or maybe they had a, a psalm there. I don't like. I'm not comfortable saying the full word. Just recommended something, and they bought it without knowing the price. Cause Say the full word. Sommelier? Sommelier? Say the whole word as Christopher Walken. Sommelier. Sounds good to me. Is That's that pretty good. perfect? It's pretty good. Yes, can I talk to you? Sommelier. Well, a lot of people say sommelier. <laughs> sommelier. That, no, but you. it's sommelier. I said it back. I could be, I could be, incur- I, someone's definitely going to come at me for that, but. I'd like to say psalm. It's, yeah, it's, like, you can just say psalm. Because I just I'm not comfortable with that word. Um, yeah, so you shouldn't be surprised because you know that you're ordering so, like if you order a 1996 bottle of whatever this is, mm. you know it's going to be pricey. What were you doing in '96? If if you're if the liquor you're drinking is old enough to drink itself, you're going to be paying a lot of fucking money for that, especially if you're at Salt Bay's restaurant. Fair uh, point. Well. I always like when something happens at Salt Bay's because. It, 
everybody just posts about how shitty it is. But it's like, it's not that good. You're paying for the gimmick. Um, the golden tomahawk, correct me if I'm wrong, it's like coated in gold, right? I don't know it's if one this one was even, was this one even guess. coated? Oh yeah, I guess it might have been. Well, this guy said, or no, never mind. This was some commenter that said it. I'm not even going to repeat it. What's up with the baklava being 50 uh, pounds, man? Have you ever had uh, a waiter bring you wine that you did not realize was that expensive or was maybe the wrong one? There was a mix-up? Because this did happen to me in San Francisco where we were brought a, a – it was like a, three of us or like three couples. And they brought us like a $400 bottle that we did not order. Oh, really? Like there was a mix-up in the year or something, and it was kind of like a uh, – and then you feel bad because like – the waiter's probably going to have to eat this, and you don't want that. Oh, the, the, worst, the worst thing about that situation as a former waiter at a place that had very expensive bottles of wine is when you hear someone order that bottle of wine, yeah. you, you perk up, and you're like, oh, this is going to be not only a great table, but I'm going to have a very good night financially. And so if that's an error, and if they don't want that, that's just going to completely derail. You've already spent that money by the time you're pouring that wine for them. Yeah, and it, it was really awkward. Because it wasn't, I mean, we were... We weren't, like, mad about it, but we were like, um, we don't want to be those people, but, like, we did, like, we got the bill, we looked, because we drank the wine, right, obviously, and we were like, oh, this is really good. I drank the wine. So they billed you for the correct bottle, not the one that you asked for, correct? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So we, we ended up getting a more expensive bottle than we, than we wanted, and um, just kind of like, I don't know about this, and they were, they were nice about it, but I, I, we, we, we gave the guy a healthy tip. I don't know if it was enough to cover the yeah. uh, the bottle. Hopefully they didn't. Hopefully it was a learning a learning moment for him. And they brought him in the back and they said, "Hey, waiter, do we, better." We had a waiter recently that pulled a, a pretty cool move with me. I ordered a, a mezcal marg, and they're like, "What kind of mezcal do you want?" I was kind of talking to. Him. I was like, "I don't really just whatever." And he goes, "Well, let me recommend blank." And I said, "Okay, that's fine." And then five minutes later, he he walks back up. He goes, "Hey, man." Um, the one I recommended to you, I'm sorry, it's sixty four dollars a shot. I don't know if you still want to stick with that one or not, because it's more of like a sipping mezcal. You know, it's nothing for you. And I was like, oh, thank you for telling me. Please, no, I was just whatever's the cheapest one. Uh, I thought that was a cool move. Well, it, instead of just sticking me, with it would have been a really fucked up move had he just charged you sixty dollars for yeah. a mezcal margarita. Yeah, it was a cool move in the sense that he undid the uncool move. It was the right move. Yeah, it was, was what, the correct move. It's got to be kind of a fine line. You can speak to this as you were in the service industry, as you mentioned. Because you don't want to, like, offend somebody by being like, hey, you sure you want this really expensive one? Because you get a guy's like, oh, what? You don't think I can afford yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. You got to feel out. Yeah, your... you got to be like, <laughs> yeah. you did. You just got to double and triple check it, right? I was I was lucky. and uh, no, I don't know if lucky is the word, but I was underage. So if somebody asked me for a recommendation, I always went through the bar just to give them a recommendation. Because if someone's like, oh, what's a nice bourbon? I'd be like, I don't know, Jack Daniels? Yeah, what's this 16-year-old thing? <laughs> yeah. I need to know what the 16-year-old prefers. Yeah. This yeah. guy who's drinking uh, Jolt and Kentucky Deluxe on the Captain weekend. Captain Morgan. But because we because it was a, a wine-driven place, I did learn some some various bottles that were good recommendations based on their budget. And so that was nice. But when it came to like liquor and stuff, I was like, well, I don't fucking know. Like I'm drinking early times. So... A lot of times when I was at Subway, when somebody would order, uh, they would like want double meat or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. you know, I'd be like, okay, you, you sure you want double meat? You know it's going to cost you. And it was always tough because it's like you don't want to offend the person like I was mentioning. And like people are like, oh, you don't think I can afford double meat? Like, no, that's not what I'm saying. I just, I'm trying to be up front here. It was a whole thing. Then they left me off the schedule. I could see you being not allowed to use the register when you worked at Subway. Why? I don't know. I was never a thief. They, no, not because of that. Just like they just didn't trust you to work the register. Like they knew that you're going to be giving people free double meat and stuff. Uh, I, there was probably <laughs> some of that going on. One time working at Singular Wireless, my drawer was short a hundred bucks, like exactly. And I, they had like pulled the tape and like went through all this investigation. I have no idea to this day what happened to the money. I promise you, it was very uncomfortable. How long? How many years was that investigation? It was. It was a ten year investigation. Really? Yeah. They like interviewed me and they drilled me with questions. It was it was it was tough. So the guy who put uh, seventy one dollars worth of pizza huh. on the company card, huh. I paid y'all back. You for had that. a pizza Shut party. Up. You had a pizza party. Didn't even invite us. I didn't have a pizza party. It, it sounds was, like it was a party. It was pizza for the for the whole fam. Seventy dollars worth of pizza is always a party. No, that's a fair that's, point. That, that's a good point, Dave. 
but yeah, then uh, then uh, Tuan uh, yelled at me for drinking Corona after hours in the um, in the fridge at Subway. That's just bad boys. Shout dude. out Tuan. He's a good dude, but I, I deserve to be yelled at. Me and my buddy Norris were we uh, we would skate we would skateboard behind in the alley behind Subway like in our breaks. Pretty much every like uh, Dave Ruff stereotype was achieved at, at my during my time at Subway. Well, I respect that that you would clear it by people that they could afford double meat. That's well, really big to, of you. Man. Very big of you. The, the footlongs weren't always five dollars. Will it's fair minus the champagne. What's the most egregiously priced item on this receipt? Let me pull it back up. Oh, hold on, we got it here. Baklava is dessert, right? Yeah, and like that, you make that in a pan. Let's talk about that eleven dollar Red 50 Bull. Fifty pounds. Uh, Per or eleven dollar Red Bull, crazy. Should any asparagus ever cost eighteen dollars? No. Like I, I don't, I don't see a world where I see that and feel good about it. Well, a Red Bull for eleven. Well, the 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 four golden baklavas for fifty dollars each, fifty pounds each. That's that's just absurd. That is absurd. Who and are the Red four? Bull. Who are the four people at the table that are like, no, I want the gold one? There are twenty total baklavas. That's a lot of baklavas. I don't know what a baklava is. That's why I'm being quiet. It's like it's a, a it's a pastry of sorts. Yeah, it's it's. Um, I couldn't tell you what's in it. Is it nutty? Like it's like Eastern European in origin or something. I don't know. Brett Brett had the one Red Bull. I'm gonna tell you this: if I ever get fu money, I will never ever order a golden plated any any meat. Yeah, Actually, I don't need gold on my meat. You know what? I'm just I'm just not ever gonna go to salt based restaurant. I would go if I would go for the gimmick. What if he's not even there? Yeah, I'd go for the gimmick. He's probably not. He's only one man. Right. right. If, if he's not <laughs> dripping salt down his forearm in, onto my steak, what's the point? That's that's a great point. Right. Thank you, David. You know who can afford him? That's just taking. What is the what's the Snapchat thing say? What does that that's mean? That's just Will? taking a piss. That the means piss. that's yeah. That just means like Listen, you got to be kidding me. Okay, is that like is that cool English slang? Yeah, like so, so. If somebody's yeah, like if somebody says something and you don't believe it, it's like, are you taking a piss right now? Oh, I I've never like heard that. that. I'm surprised you haven't gotten that on Love Island. I may have, and I just didn't understand what they were talking about. Yeah, probably. You know who can afford this meal? Uh, the Roy family. Yes. You guys ever heard of these people? Dude, this is our succession breakdown. We're gonna break it down. This family, man, what are they gonna get into next? <laughs> Always something with this family, you know what I mean? Uh, anticipation was at an all time high yesterday on the timeline for yep. some succession. And I have to say, I'd like to give a special shout out to HBO's app for not crashing. Uh, I'd like to give a special shout out to them having it up on time. We actually started a minute early. You kidding? Seven fifty nine last night. Very cool. Uh, will there be spoilers in this segment? Yes. So if you uh, if you don't want to if you don't care, I mean it's it's the it's the debut episode. It's not like the spoilers are going to be that spoily, you know. But just fast forward to the Rothy's ad if you want to uh, skip this entire part. Please do. Listen to that Rothy's ad though. I bet it's going to go hard. Um, I wish I had watched a little bit of uh, like maybe the last two episodes of season two. Yeah, I watched uh, the finale of season two and then right up right before i watched last night's episode it has been how long since it was on there two years since season two i mean a year and a half been that long we we recapped season two on the during the first year that we had circling back okay so 2019 wow there were there were there was a character or two last night that i did not remember whatsoever who mainly in uh logan's crew the guy who, when Tom was in the bathroom on the phone with Shiv, mm-hmm. and he's knocking on the door, I, I don't oh. remember him. It, you might not remember him because I think he lost a shit ton of weight. Okay. And I don't, I don't know how he lost that weight. I don't know if, he, if, if it was because he was working out a lot or if he got sick or what. But, like, he, he looks a lot thinner than he did before. I feel like the dude is in a classic movie from the 80s that we all know really well, like Nerds or something. Porky's? Something long. Is he something the guy like from that. Porky's? I don't think he's in Porky's, no. A good movie, though. Porkies, um, and then also I I didn't. It took me a second to make it, cl- it for it to click that that was uh, Kendall's ex wife's home. Mainly when they said this is my ex wife's home. Have we not met her before? No, we've we met have. her numerous times. We have, well, but we? I just yeah. didn't re- okay. I just didn't remember her. Yeah. So Sally did a full rewatch. Like she watched every second of season two before season three. And while I didn't do the full rewatch with her, I saw a significant amount, and I'm glad that I did. 
It, it, it had a lot of people. The one person that we didn't get last night who I wanted more of is I, I need Stewie in the mix. He was mentioned. He was mentioned, but so, we, we need more Stewie. He, I hated the guy. Yeah, but that's why he's perfect. He's a great character. Is it safe to assume that we're all Team Kendall? Yeah, I am. But I'll I really like Jerry. Yeah, but Jerry's Jerry has no. She's Jerry's fighting for herself. Sure. I was a little uh, disappointed that immediately after the press conference that Kendall kind of reverted back to like I wanted him to stay in like killer mode. You he, know? he he's dude. He can't. He's not about that. Life. He, he needs. Know, he needs. He's in outside approval mode at all times. He was challenged by Logan. He's like, "You're not a killer." He's like, "All right, bitch, watch this." And he went and he he pulled that move in the press conference. I wanted him to just flip that switch and stay in like killer mode. He was like, "Dude, can you believe we just did?" Like, I don't know. Well, they, no, dude. He sat silently in a bathtub. Yeah. Kind of swag move. They did. Uh, we've all been there. Yeah. They did kind of nip. Any, any thought that like there might be some like this was a Kendall Logan like super meta collusion, mm -hmm. and what that's what I thought was going to happen, and that it becomes very clear because that that's not the case. The way the finale last season ended, it like zooms in on Logan as he's like watching the you know the press comments, and it, it you kind of feel like he was proud of him in that moment. Like, he, he was. I think he was. Grin. There's a little grin. He's a, there. He's a an absolute socio. Well, in the so there's a scene in last night's episode where you have uh, Logan sitting down in a chair, looking at a view or something. I think they're maybe in an airport or something, and and he's clearly more shook by the fact that Kendall made a move on him, and not the fact that they need to clean up the mess from this move. Like he was more focused on the fact that Kendall did this, and not the fact that like they had a mess to clean up. What what was the line? I'm gonna I'm gonna grind his bones to make my bread or something like that. That's one that I've used a lot. <laughs> yeah, in my personal life. That's pretty cold. Yeah, that's usually the first thing that comes to mind when I'm mad at somebody. Yeah. Um, do you think they just sit around and they just like start saying shit and they're like, "Yep, that's good. Just keep saying that." I don't know. I think they do. I don't think there's any way. Well, I actually kind of know they do. If you guys check out Micah's Read of the Week featuring guest editor Will DeFreeze. Wow. I did a piece featuring Adrian Brody where he talks about how like it's interesting to sit down and people and just hear the things that come out of people's mouths during the casual nature of taping the show. We didn't get to see any Adrian Brody last night though. Wait, which character? What? Adrian Brody's in season three. Okay, this will be his first appearance? Correct. Oh, dude, I was completely scrambled there. I was like, I don't remember him being a part of the show at all. He, he's going to be in season three at some point. Okay. Um, okay. okay. You know what? That's fine. Um, hey, check out his um, introduction of Sean Paul as he hosted SNL. If you're, dude. If you're really and, – and see if you can make it more than 15 seconds. It's, and if you can – You got to think he, – well, he's banned for life from SNL for that. It's. It, I don't even want to explain it. It's hard. To, it's hard to explain. It's it. impossible to, watch, to it. watch. It's not a good watch. Oh, I missed this. He, this is from a long time ago. He, he takes he, introducing Sean Paul on. Uh, on. He goes SNL. Chet Hanks. Yeah, he goes full Chet. He and he went off script. They're not supposed to do bits. And he got banned. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's yeah. no longer allowed to do SNL. <laughs> Question. It's, it's a, not a good look. Uh, they in season two. I know they reference the president. They don't say which president. Mm -hmm. But was. Did uh, what's his name? Kieran Culkin. Um, what's the kid's name? Um, <laughs> his name escapes me. Yeah, mine too. If you had, if you hadn't put me on the spot, I would have known it immediately. But um, did he mention? Did he reference like the crazy in the White House? So are they like, what are they saying? Like, cause that that's a big player. They're trying to get the White House to you do know, we know eliminate any investigation. Do we know like what what party is in the White House right now? No, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, they they won't they they I don't think that they've said like, oh yeah, we got to talk to Trump. We're old friends. I'm assuming, but he referenced. I feel like they've alluded to, um, the crazy guy in the White House, and Roman. I assume they're talking about the Orange Man. Roman is his name. Roman, yeah. excuse me. I don't know. It that's. Yeah, they they probably if you ask like the the writers, they probably just allude to some figure who's not an actual real president. You know, just they are not touching COVID this this season or at all. Succession is. You knew not. that going in. Sally told me. Okay. And I actually very much appreciate that. I don't. I don't really feel like I. 
Uh, you can tell that the morning show is going in the COVID direction very aggressively. And, you know, I'm excited to see what they do with it, but I don't want every single show that I yeah. watch to be covering COVID. Yeah. Uh, so Shiv is obviously going to go to Kendall's side. That's what it looks like. This puts Tom in a compromising position, but you have to think that just based on the general public sentiment towards Tom and uh, Greg, that Tom is going to flip as well because his wife and his best little buddy Greg is over on Kendall's side. How did Greg get get wrapped up in the whole Kendall thing? He was I, just like chaperoning the like the the. He's got the weird. proof. He's got the papers. Because when they were burning the papers, when he and Tom were burning the papers, he decided to take a bunch of them. And I think Kendall knows that. But I when, could be wrong. But when yeah, when Kendall went to like flew to the press conference, he took a helicopter to a PJ to a vehicle. Uh, Greg was with him. I was wondering why he went along for that ride. No comment. No, no comment. God. You don't have to say that. And so he just kind of he just kind of defaults on Kendall's team because he was there with him. Good. I want that. He didn't choose. I want it. that. I like Greg and Kendall together. Yeah. They 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 make me happy. I'm glad to have the show back. I, I wasn't really looking forward to it. It was just like, oh yeah, I'll definitely watch, but it wasn't. I enjoyed that. I wasn't episode. ready. Like, yeah. I do wish I'd gone back. I still might go watch season two again. The show gets me really horny for um, just corporate, uh, corporate, you know, boardroom stuff, legal stuff. Um, you know, you're like, oh, man, this would be awesome to be like this big, high powered corporate attorney representing the biggest media conglomerates in the world. And then you remember it's like, well, realistically, I'm probably just going to represent like a pest control company in, in Lubbock that like is, is getting evicted. And it's nothing like that. Then I'm like, yeah, I think I, I made the right choice here. I'm the Personally speaking. I'm the opposite of you, and I was the most horny you could be to have this show back. The timeline, the timeline was very thirsty yesterday. It was. Barrett called people out, and while that might have been a fair tweet, I, I thought it was like, come on, Barrett, don't rain on everyone's parade. They, We're having fun out say? here. Are they not doing the show? He, he just made fun of, of the, the Twitter sphere, talking no. about how excited everybody was. The way oh, last here, season oh, ended, Do you want to read the tweet, excited. Dave? You want me to read it as Barrett? Mm-hmm. Hey, guys, just wanted to do a tweet about Succession because it's, like, the best show. And, oh, my God, Roman is so funny and him and Jerry, LOL, cringe. And, like, all the characters are so bad. But I love them, LMAO. It's so good. You have to watch. And did I tell you about Cousin Greg yet? He's – yeah. Okay. Check out Club Cool. Okay. Subscribe. <laughs> that's, that's a good Barrett. Why is that Barrett? It's a good Barrett. It's a good Barrett. It's a good Barrett. Barrett. It's a good Barrett. Barrett. It's a good Barrett. <laughs> it's a good Barrett. Uh, they're definitely doing the show on 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 OCC. You have to. I, I do. It's like the most popular show going right now. Ooh, it's a good show. besides Squid Game. This guy responds. I'm sure OCC introduced a lot of people, myself included, to the show way back in season one. You could think of it that way instead of being butt hurt that Damn. everyone else finally caught on. Bears just Damn. ruffling feathers out here. You love to see it. He's edgy, man. He's mixing it up. Kind of okay. like the intersection of style and pop culture. Right. Man, we're talking about pop culture right now, but I think we're about to talk style because I'm seeing some Rothy's stuff on the TL right now. I got big news in shoes, boys. Rothy's is now selling men's sneakers and men's driving loafers. Even more big news. They just launched premium Merino wool shoes for all. Merino wool is nature's perfect material. Soft, comfortable, machine washable, and sustainable. When I'm about to step out, and you know I'll be stepping out, I find myself reaching for the Rothy's because... They are so comfortable. Is it because they're available in cool colors and classic styles that you'll want to wear literally everywhere? They obviously look good, but what you can't, what you won't know until you try them on is they are so, so comfortable. Well, they've got unbeatable comfort, Dylan. Classic styles, easy to clean, sustainable. Rothy's men's shoes check every box. Don't you hate it when your shoes get dirty? These ones you just toss in the washer. I do. That's, that's an underrated part about that. The easiness of cleaning. I've, got, I've had so many shoes that I've ruined trying to wash and clean, and they're so easy. So... Uh, I'm not, absolutely not capping right now, okay? Whoa. I'm not capping. I didn't know that. The first time I wore these, I took Rosie for a walk. Rosie went off into, a, like, some bushes. You know, she was being a wild girl trying to find some stuff, sniffing around, and she had some dirt on her paws. And She's what'd like, she do? She awesome. rolled over to me, and she put a paw right on my new Rothy. I was like, what are you doing? Guess what I did? I went and washed them. Like new. Like new. Facts? Facts. Rothy's just launched their first ever collection of accessories for men in addition to their shoes. They've got wallets, carry bags, card cases. Rothy's has all your everyday carry essentials. No more worrying about keeping your wallet clean after weeks of wear. Rothy's wallets are also fully machine washable. 
Think about this kind of stuff. It's crazy. Brett got some of the loafers, and and while I very much enjoy my sneakers, I've been having purchase envy ever since he rolled yeah, in with the loafers. I'm a little upset about it too. It's 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 I can speak very highly about these loafers just based on my experience through Brett. I'm very jealous. I mean, I, what have what what have other people said that we haven't said already? Well, I'll give you one. Esquire said, "Pick up a pair of Rothy's shoes before they sell out." That's how confident they are in these shoes. Even Forbes said they're a travel must-have. CNN says that they're comfortable to wear right out of the box, and I have to say they're correct. To help you welcome fall season in style, Rothy's is doing something special. That's right. They gave us a chance to share this super rare opportunity with our listeners for a limited time right now. You can get $20 off your first pair or your first purchase at rothys.com slash steam. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash steam. Head to rothys.com slash steam and find your new favorites today. You guys familiar with Pokemon cards? Is Parks into Pokemon? He is into Pokemon. He's Pikachu for Halloween. Does he have Pokemon Spoiler cards? <laughs> he does have Pokemon cards, yeah. Well, actually, we played yesterday. What would he I do? Really, I don't really know how to play, but he, he, uh, he I just do what he tells me to do. So you have the swear jar and the thumb-sucking jar, right? That is that is accurate, yes. What would he do if instead of having a swear jar or a thumb-sucking jar, that every time he did something wrong, you burned one of his Pokemon cards? Ooh, he would probably stop sucking his thumb immediately because he is very into Pokemon at the moment. You guys familiar with Liz Mayer? Not Liz Fair, Dave. I know you're a big fan. Supernova. By the way, this, the swear part of the swear jar is is for me. Yeah, I know. Not for him. He doesn't cuss. You're a cuss boy, though. I, 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 I let one slip yesterday, yeah. So Liz Mayer, who's apparently some kind of Republican person. Communication strategist. Yeah, she's, she strategically communicates with people. She definitely has a line to Logan Roy. She says, she tweeted, uh, and this, this set the timeline on fire. She tweeted, she said, I've resorted to burning Pokemon cards as a punishment when my kid doesn't do the basic stuff he has to do. What you ask qualifies as baking or as basic stuff. Well, it says eating. She, she clarified, he comes home without having eaten any of his lunch. Card burnt. He doesn't what? eat enough dinner. Card burnt. Bear in mind, my kid is about four foot six at age seven and, and yet only when, yet weighs less than 55 pounds. He needs to put some weight on, specifically muscle. Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is this serious? Yes. So, so the, the punishment isn't, isn't for bad behavior. It's for not eating enough? Not eating. What the hell's she's going on He's not putting on mu- enough muscle mass, so she's burning his Pokemon cards like they're going out of style. Is 55 pounds small for a 7-year-old? I couldn't tell you how big a 7-year-old's supposed to be. How's, how big's the homie? So Parks is 6. Uh, his birthday is in February, and Parks weighs 40 pounds. So Parks is a very small kid for his age. Okay. He's uh, like single-digit percentile How tall is weight. he? Um, he is currently about 44, 45 inches. Okay. I don't, so he's four he's feet tall? He's just under four feet. Okay. So so he's got six inches before he needs to be at 55 pounds where this kid is. Yeah, this kid's a lot bigger than Parks. Was he, He's a year older. So are you going to start burning his Pokemon cards? No, but I have been very concerned about how much my son has is, is eating, which is not very much. I've talked to his doctor I feel like that's a it. problem on the rise, is kids uh, not eating. Because I've, I've, I'm not going to, you know call anybody out but i have a family member who, who who's very picky eater yeah and i feel like it's something i'd never really heard about yeah until I like recently i don't know i mean i've been very concerned about it so much so that i've i've had talks with his mom about it i've talked to other parents i've talked to his doctor his doctor said don't worry about it kids just hit growth spurts at different times um when he when he's ready to start growing he's gonna ha- his appetite will pick up so i'm trying to talk myself down a little bit but i do it does it does upset me have you thought about burning his dinosaurs no, no. Which one would you burn first? I, I, don't, I, I wouldn't do it, Dave. You know? But, like, let's just he's say, big, like, he's a big dino guy. Yeah, I know. Dude, I didn't even have to think about, like, until right now. Like, I mean, what, Fritz is about six months old? Like, I haven't had to punish him for anything. He's a baby. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to punish my child. I'm not yeah. ready for this. I've, like, begged him to eat more, and he gets upset. And it's been this whole thing. It really concerned me. I feel bad when I, like, tell him to stop. Like, if he's, like, Pulling my hair or, or you know, ripping, trying to trying to smack a glass in my hand. I'm like, stop. And I'm like, oh man, sorry, bud. I'm just kidding. Fritz has Fritz has discovered my beard. Yeah. He really enjoys tugging on it. It's a tuggable beard. As it turns out, I don't enjoy him tugging on it. Oh. But I let him do it. It's so Fritzy. I, I let look, him do it. Uh, driving driving roads to his his nanny today. I look in the the rearview mirror, and you know, I've got the mirror back there in the car seat. And I see him, and Randy's got his head there, and I see Randy's cheek, his little getting pulled out. He's got a hold of Randy's whisker. Aww. 
And Randy's like, uh, I was like, oh, dude, no, please, you know, you can only take so much of that. It's a cute scene, though. It is, but I feel bad for Randy yeah, having to just course. take it. When you were a kid, what was the worst punishment that you could get from your parents for acting up? Um, gosh. My, mo- my mom did something real messed up to me. We had a card store called The Game at the, uh, in the town over. It took about 15 to 20 minutes to drive there. And they had the best card selection out of anybody. Not Pokemon cards. I'm talking sports cards. Yeah. And it was called The Game. And my mom hated going there because I would beg her to go there pretty much every day because I loved sports cards. Uh, I would always try to get like expensive cards. And she got tired of telling me, like, no, I'm not going to spend $30 on a Damon Stoudemire fucking card. That like, sounds sick. Yeah. Bet you wish you would have now. I know. I know. And so uh, I did something that was a very minor offense, in my opinion. And instead of, like, punish me accordingly, she banned me from going to the game for a month. And it was solely so she didn't have to worry about it. But now I'm a father. I'm like, I get it. Yeah. I get it. If I can X that out, I'm going to do that. My parents would just always threaten to send me to Wayfair. Really? Yeah. The Dave armoire? To, to traffic you. Yeah, they're going to send me Sex out of Sex trafficking. Here. I don't know about that. What? Jesus. Is that how Wayfair gets their kids? They just like find kids that are in trouble and then acquire them. They're like, you know, if you want to punish your kid, you could just send them with send them our way. Dave, I see that you're on Liz's timeline. Does she I'm have any other taping. stuff? Is she is she in she, trouble now? She's a she's a she's a tweeter. She seems scorched earth. I was trying to find um, I was trying to find that the 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 tweet in question here, but it's just she she's a tweeter. October seventeenth appears to be a day where she was just going in. She looks like she looks like a fake human. She looks like a character out of an SNL skit. Who are you talking about? Well, it's Liz Mayer. I don't know who this person is. The person where she's the one who's burning her kids' yeah. Pokemon cards, dude. Oh, that's you, her name. We're doing a seg. You're not a you're not a fan of the re- noted Republican strategist, Liz Mayer. Rank your top Republican strategist. I, I don't want to. I'm not going to do that. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just it seems a little unnecessary. The whole burning. Maybe, why, why, maybe throw them away, or just rip them in half. What's I mean, burning them is a whole thing. Just take them away. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> like, just you don't have to burn them. The kid's not even acting up, man. It's just not. He's not hungry. He's not. Come on. We, should we start doing this to Randy when he acts up in the studio? <laughs> start burning his Pokemon cards. Yeah, I'm gonna burn. It's devastating. <laughs> Randy's. Randy has to instead of putting stuff in the in the uh, island boy jar. Randy has to put a Pokemon card in there, and we'll burn them when we when we have time. You know when they do the. Uh, when you become a made man in the mob mm-hmm. and they burn the, 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 the saint card in your hand, you have to hold it in there as it burns. We should do that to all new employees with a Pokemon card. Okay. They have to hold it in there and then they take the oath. I'm fine with that. Is that what you have to do when you're a made man? I haven't become a made man yet. Um, allegedly, I'm still, I'm still waiting for the books to open back up. What exactly does that mean, to be a made man? You're made, dude. Imagine not knowing. Bro, have you not seen uh, Casino or Goodfellas? Yeah, but I, I've never really fully understood what that means. You're untouchable. You're protected. Late, yeah, you're protected and, uh, except for by the higher-ups, the bosses. You have, to, you have to have approval to go out. Yeah. No someone one's... someone steps you in public, and no you got you got a bunch of people behind you going, oh! No one's truly safe in that life. Please. Oh, hey. Have you watched oh. the Sopranos movie yet? Uh, I'm not going to. Okay, I'm avoiding it. I, I don't know. There's been such, uh, there's been such accusations of overacting that I just don't know if I'm ready for it. I don't know if I'm ever gonna watch it. Sorry. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. I want to. I want to support it. Why did, why did Netflix do it and not HBO? Or am I wrong in that? Was it no, not HBO, Netflix? It was HBO. HBO. It, yeah. Okay. I was gonna say that's that's a weird move. Can we skip this next story so we can get, get to Brett's breaking news and really party in here Wait, today? what's the next story? It was a lame story that I just put in here. It's about a South Carolina elementary school teacher who was arrested after uh, she had some edibles in the reward box. Marijuana edibles. Yeah. I was going to piggyback off that and talk about like all the warnings that come out this time of year about trick-or-treating and how dumb it is. Oh, yeah. No one's giving away edibles. Yeah, watch out for the syringe hidden in your Snickers bar. Get I hate when that happens. Right? If there were actually people in Austin handing out edibles, like I think we would all be showing up there. Do you think that they're going to put the Edmund Fitzgerald in a Snickers bar, Will? Maybe. They might. <laughs> Are you referencing a great boy? No, what was it? I was, I don't know, one of those fucking trash Trash Camp, Camp Paul. Paul. Amazing. <laughs> That's so stupid. What's up with that breaking news, though? Dude, it's presented by Crowd Health, baby. You don't know more than half of Americans are on a high deductible health insurance plan. 
I probably am. I need to check out CrowdHealth, my friends. They're on the hook for thousands of dollars in deductibles, co-pays, and sky-high premiums. And for many people in the U.S. concerned about the cost of health insurance, there are no good options. You either go uninsured or pay through the nose for a high-deductible plan with questionable coverage, all because of a broken health insurance system. It's like being stuck with an outdated cable TV plan and not knowing about Netflix. This isn't health insurance, my friends. It's a better way to pay medical expenses. CrowdHealth is a community of people who are tired of paying for a broken system, a place where you can get simple, flexible, and affordable ways to pay for your health care. And being in the crowd health community can save hundreds of dollars monthly and put thousands of dollars back in your pocket. This is flexible. A membership is, is it's a monthly subscription. You can start or stop whenever it's convenient. They got transparent pricing, customized to fit your needs. It even lowers your monthly health care costs. And so you, you can see any doctor you want. It's also simple. You can use their app. You guys are a fan of apps? <clears throat> Huge love fan. apps. Mike had some good apps at his uh, wedding, actually. He did. Ooh, mm-hmm. that mushroom thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can scan these bills, throw them away. CrowdHealth takes it from there. You don't need a scanner, Dylan. I think you can do it from your phone. So don't go out and buy a scanner. Oh. What if you already have one? Oh, then you're just living. Okay. It's also a community of health-conscious members who want to get and stay healthy in return for lower prices. CrowdHealth gets rid of the insurance middleman. We hate middlemen across the, across the board, really. And it uh, passes savings on to its members. CrowdHealth is able to offer amazing prices because of its community of health-conscious members. But for a limited time, our listeners get their first month free. And after you've been a member, CrowdHealth will include a fitness wearable. That's 30 days to try risk-free plus a fitness wearable. Just go to joincrowdhealth.com slash fit and enter promo code STEAM to sign up. That's joincrowdhealth.com slash fit, promo code STEAM to sign up. CrowdHealth is not a health insurance company. It's a community-powered alternative. Terms and conditions do apply. Brett, let's break some news. How are we doing, guys? Doing, Big weekend. We're doing well. Had a good time with Dave and, and Will. Dude, new new haircut Brett was Sorry, on a fucking prowl. Sorry, I'm You're looking you. good. Thank you. He, that is a good On a prowl haircut. to have fun Thank and you. drink beers, not to like... Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I'm just correct. saying he I was, was just, he was just out there. Just a weapon. We, uh, we I'd never seen it styled. How'd you? What'd you think? <laughs> I was like, okay, Bro, Brett, we get it. You're fall. tall. Let's go. I'm th- this the the Dell Technologies match play thing being hung up or uh, throwing me off. Never yeah, I think that. Randy this did this on Friday after I left the studio, and I have to say it's it's kind of uh it's kind of tying the room together a little bit. Randy, I do appreciate you leaving space for mine, uh, which is at home. I need to bring it in. Bring it in, please. Yeah, that was that was thoughtful of you. Would you like to go? Oh, how's your uh, how's your neck? All right, we're, we're we're on the road to recovery. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely a lot better than it was the other day. Was it because you you were blowing people's backs out on the dance floor? Uh, no, 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 it wasn't that. That's not it. But I was <laughs> I was doing that. I did have major concerns about your your back and neck situation at the wedding. I was like, oh, Dylan's gonna leave at like nine. He's gonna call an Uber and like go home because no, he's gonna be no. like, I can't even dance. No, no, get out of here with that. I can't dance. Oop, call an Uber in from the drip. I'm not doing that. I did say, Randy and I show. made it to the uh, the after party. Shouts to... That makes two of us. From there, did you make it to the hotel lobby? <laughs> no. I knew that if I went to the after party, we were going to be on Will Will zombie alert, so I decided to uh, not oh, go to the hombre. after party. Oh, baby. My bus didn't get in back until uh, like 1230. And I was like, best case, I get down there at one, and then I've got what forty minutes, forty five minutes, and then a, uh, one more a t- not an insignificant drive, and back. We, or we would have Ubered, Uber. or I would have Ubered yeah. back. No way, Alyssa was going to make it, and it was just, yeah. So I apologized to to everybody. I told, hey, I'll be at the after party. Mm-hmm. I called it. I knew you weren't going. Yeah, well, you didn't go either. Were. Yeah, I, I said that too. Well, you know, you kind of had an air about you in the comment, it made me feel bad. <laughs> Brad, break some news. <laughs> to, would you like to break go? some news so we can break this tension? Antiques. Mitch Austin Real Estate or Taco Bell? Well, can I can I get a clarification out there before we answer which one we want to go with? Sure. Is this antiques like old things, or is this antiquing like when you mm. take your bo- it's some flower and throw it in your boy's face? It's more of a, a business model that was illegal that involves antiques. I, w- I wish it would have been the thing you referenced, mm. but I definitely want to hear about it. Sure, we'll go there. Shout out to KJ for this story. Uh, Murdad Sadeg, who has operated Sadeg Gallery in Midtown Manhattan since 1982, uh, he's been selling counterfeit artifacts from like Egypt Love for that. decades. Love um, that stuff, man. He's been saying, "Oh yeah, we, these were taken from the tombs." Oh my tombs! Um, and he said he was driven by financial greed in the official in <laughs> yeah. the official plea agreement. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Love that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's very forthcoming. He would also uh, convince people to write fake positive reviews about his store. 
All right, that's like every business. And he would. I mean, uh, that's every dry cleaner in the in the metropolitan area. He would also he hired a company to bury negative reviews on Google. Love that. So they would just farm positive reviews, which I don't think is what we do. No, it's definitely what we do. Right. It's definitely what we do. We pay them the reviews. Content. Yeah, the reviews that I read at the beginning of every Monday episode. Those are we write those. But part of me is like, you know, he hustled for thirty years. So he was pulling us off for thirty years. Yeah. yeah Did he have any he, legitimate? I feel like I feel like he should be like uh-huh. grandfathered into just doing it legally at this point. They look fucking real too. I, I mean, mean, this these guy was are like, Look at those. He's, he's, got was, the, he's got like the Sphinx. And but stuff. he has so many of them. It's like that would raise a red flag to me. Like, yeah. how did you acquire? Uh, how did you get all these, dude? A sphincter says what? Wow. Got him. You see Wayne's World? You're familiar with uh, Taco Bell, right, Dave? <laughs> no. Well, Sometimes you got to live moss. Right, the student section thing. Um, well, you you were aware of the, the crunchy chicken taco sandwich. Is it a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, so uh, many people had that idea, Dave, that... What? Uh, it's it's now gone. People, it, they're sold out. The limited time offer is over. Was this a sandwich that has the chicken as the bun? Correct. Well, apparently, or no, it, no, no, no. The bun, it's like a half taco, a, half, half sandwich yeah. situation. Uh, oh, oh, that, that, like that. It's almost like a hot dog. Yeah. Because when they when they were doing the, they had a sandwich that had chicken as the bun, or was that KFC? <sighs> One of them had it, and, and keto people went crazy for it. If you're keto, you're not eating KFC if you're keto. Posers, saying. posers. Just saying. I know. I'm just saying. Just want to congratulate Taco Bell on the success uh, of their limited time are they, offer. Are they trying to take a page out of Popeye's book where it's like, we just can't keep these things in stock. No. Maybe we'll bring it back like eight months from now. Undoubtedly. With a Twitter campaign that goes viral. Correct. That's what they're doing. I just want to say they executed well on on part one of that plan. Congratulations. I, honestly, them. I would like to try it. Well, and now I can. too late, man. Too late, dog. They had, too many, they had too many good tweets like Kendall wanted. What was your uh, good tweets after we, we got blitzed on Saturday with John Duda yeah. and Co? Uh-huh. What was your, your meal order? Oh, it was um I don't even I've never heard of this chicken place, but I had I was at the mean eyed cat. I called my Uber. Cool spot. I postmated um their back a meal. I know. I know. Woo-hoo. Uh, from like to meet me at my house or to be at my house when I got back, and we arrived at the perfect time. We were synced up. Really? So it was, I had basically chicken strips and waffle fries, but they were waffle fries that tasted like they had the Arby's curly fries seasoning mm. on them. They now were, we're fuck- talking, waffle David. Fries. Let me and, 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 you drop I'll, the at. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the at. While Dave does that, Will, what did you do? I ended up ordering some pizza from uh, Phantasma, great yeah. choice, which is right down the street from my old apartment, but. I was very, I was very into the idea of having some some thin crust pizza, so I ordered them to the place for Sally, and then by the time I got home, it was still warm, baby. Mm-hmm. I was just feasting. Sam's cris- crispy chicken. Okay. Shout out to you. Are they Shout out to the, Sam's what, crispy what chicken. What neighborhood are they in? I think it's, I think it's in the downtown area. Okay. Place looks great, David. I have to admit, I went Domino's and it was phenomenal as always. Stop. Handmade I pan. think you would like it. I think everybody here would. I, I almost oh, I got a good menu. Okay. Anyway, the last story I have is Niche Austin Real Estate. Because I've on? been exonerated. You, oh, No one ever doubted. We doubted Mako, you the first time you dropped this. Mako oh. is officially closing October 27th. But I think you just got lucky here. Because you talked about this so long ago that there's, there couldn't have been plans for a, a closure at some point. There was. The only reason I, I knew it was going to happen was because the development filings take like years to do and they're going to build a 60 story tower which will be Austin's second highest building oh, on top of it the the up in the air part of it was they didn't know if it was going to be mixed to use so it would be retail on the on the bottom floor so there was a potential in for Mako to, to stick around after construction like container bars doing at their high rise yeah but everyone knows that that once the high rise goes above you that business is going to yeah, absolutely it is tank silly, man this city. So Mako has Pave Paradise. Uh, nine days left, which I will be attending because I've never had their sake mac and cheese. No one needs sake what? mac and cheese. <laughs> what did you That's call it? Sake mac and cheese. Okay. No one needs that. It's that is phenomenal. unnecessary. They reverse call happy it hour. the Hill mm-hmm. Country. Dude, it's happy hour, but in reverse. Dave, speaking of the Hill Country, I'm glad you went there. Violet Crown Amphitheater is coming to the Hill Country. I call 20, it a 20,000-seat amphitheater with a 96-bay driving range, two apartment towers, complete with pools, 
and it's at the corner of Southwest Parkway and hey. 71. So Dylan and I have a driving range in town. That's fantastic. Because yeah. this is one of the worst driving range towns in, in the world. A- agree. I can't tell you a worse Saratoga one. Saratoga had like four. Or at least major towns. I can't tell you a worse one that I've ever been to. You're right. It is bad. It's trash. They they took the one that was near me. They they tore it down to put up like a hospital. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to piss on it. I'm uh, trying, yeah, I'm trying to flop shot. Did you hit the range at all at a Coronado Municipal Golf Course? And, I uh, did. I enjoyed that range because it, it was it's one of the only ranges I've ever been to where there are numerous people walking around giving unsolicited swing tips. <laughs> Wait, really? Yes, I've never seen so many like parking lot dudes just be oh. like, "Oh yeah, no, you got a little, you got a little caught up oh, there." God. Try to get those hands down fast. I had fun at that course, man. It's it's an awesome place. Yeah, I like how this is just one dude who's he's like an old guy who owns a property development place now. He retired from his previous job um, and just wants to build like his dream. He's like building Jerry World for himself. He's like he wants a dope music venue, but he has to have a driving range too. Also, a distillery and tasting room. I always say when I'm hitting Sheesh. golf balls, I'm like, man, I wish there was like a concert going on. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where is this going again? The intersection of Southwest Parkway and 71 heading oh, out towards BK. Yeah. That's, uh, so it's it's five minutes it's right from me down the and street from Brett. eight minutes from Dylan. Just mm-hmm. keep going up the hill past Kyle. Very sick. Very cool. Very cool. What's the what's the expected? When are they breaking ground? Uh, later this year with the driving range completed uh, in spring 2023, distillery and tasting room in summer 2023. Distillery and tasting room. Correct. So I can go hit balls. Yep. I can go listen to like uh, a cover band. Not only is there the big music venue, there's an acoustic music venue. Oh, yeah. And also get twiddle up in this there. This is cool, oh, I guess. Yeah. So. It's cool. I mean, I'm never going to go to this place. I'll just be clear. A life altering. <laughs> if, if it's no, where we're going to go. It's in the hill country. It's like just past my house. Yeah, you live too far away, though, dog. Brett's I don't live that far away. In the middle of the hill idea? country. It takes. It would take. It would take. Well, 14 minutes to drive from his front door to my front. I'll show you 14 minutes. I'm just tired of them paving paradise to put up a driving range. I'm not. Hey, we need at least two. Put up a drive That's one. Range. I'd be like, you know what? Pave the hell out of it. Why don't we ever go to Top Golf? Because you guys are both big Top Golf guys. Place stinks. It's far. It's it's far. I don't want to go to the domain. It's a golf. Not even going to entertain that question after my experience at Top Golf. You were in a league. <laughs> Trey, a league. Trey Kennedy scarred him. He's yeah. Trey Kennedy was the cherry oh, yeah, on top of the true. league. The league, the league had me out on Top Golf, and then Trey Kennedy. The fact that Top Golf allows people to just steal other people's food right out from under their noses, I just can't fuck with that. Their wings, beer, sports. <laughs> yeah, you shout out to that. Trey. Do we need to leave? Yeah, it's time. Hey, go buy a candle. Vellabox.com slash circling dash back. Do you even burn? Circling dash back. Okay. You questioning my URL? It just sounded weird. But Never said it. question my URL. I learned that lesson the hard way. Mm-hmm. Bye.